all summed up what Cecil Sharp left out of the story by uh, visually by a movie called Songcatcher, which kind of like takes that story of, of people finding this connection between these Victorian songs and in, in England and the Appalachian Mountains. And so this woman is, collect, is going to collect songs in the Appalachian Mountains and she's looking for this ballad singer. And she stops and sees a black man playing a banjo on the stoop, you know, um, which in the film is played by Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal, right? And uh, she stops and asks him where this ballad singer is and then keeps going. And that, to me, is the story, you know? It's like, oh, hey, black person playing a banjo? Where, <laughs> where's the ballad singers? All right, you know, let's forget you now. You know, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of it. I mean, the, the story of, I mean, it's like, for me, it's multiple things, you know? One is the assumption that all of this music starts in Appalachia, which is just not true. Um, two is that, um, there were no black people in Appalachia, which is also not true. So those are two enormously huge assumptions to make and really skew the story. But like, he wasn't the only one who did that. I mean, Lomax did it too. I mean, a lot of people who were looking for a narrative ignore everything that's outside of that narrative because, you know, and it doesn't take away from the work they did. It doesn't take away from what they saved, but it does frustrate you when you think about what they left out. The journey of the banjo is so interesting and is so hidden in American culture. You know, you don't have a banjo until you have um, a lot of people from different parts of, you know, primarily West Africa um, coming over, <clears throat> not under their own volition, um, being brought over to North America, particularly to the Caribbean, which is where, you know, people who were going to be sold into slavery were seasoned, you know, especially if they were going to end up going up to the North America, up to North, Amer North America. So... So much of what becomes African American music and dance is formed, you know, in the Caribbean, in Congo Square, in New Orleans, where all of these different cultures didn't speak the same language, weren't playing the same instruments, but were playing in a sort of family of instruments, of these lute type instruments, you know, either the memory brought over or the instruments themselves brought over. And then, you know, the syncretization of all of that, you know, forming what becomes known as the banjo, the banjar, the banjo, whatever. Banza, Banza, um, in the Caribbean, and then being brought with people up to the southern United States, or oh, actually just the United States in general, you know, because people forget that there was, there were enslaved people all over, you know, from, you know, I think it was like the first European settler stepped foot on, you know, in, in North America, and like 20 years later was the first African American, you know what I mean? It's like very, very intertwined all over the place, you know, and, and that's, that's, really important to remember because the, the, the image of, you know, slavery in the deep south leaves out the Tidewater region, the Mid-Atlantic, and all of those folks that were forming these cultures, these enslaved cultures that then were marched down to the, to the pens in Louisiana and then over to Texas and to Alabama and Miss, you know. So it's, it, it's a very much a, a wide a wide cultural thing, you know? So you have African Americans with this native instrument, you know, this truly American instrument, the banjo, and it's a plantation instrument for the first hundred years of its existence. And not no white person plays it. Like, people know it. That's a plantation instrument. And you, you have this, and you also have black musicians being trained to play for white dances, you know? So you have these... Um, these dance masters, you know, coming in, but then, you know, black musicians pretty quickly become very prized. And so they're, they're going back to the quarters and they're playing the banjo and they're doing all this, you know, their, their music and dance. And then they're going to play for these European dances and they're playing fiddle. And, you know, there's all of these primary source sources about, you know, that dark, you could play a Stratspey, you know, it's like they're learning Scottish tunes and English tunes and all of the, you know, whoever, you know, whoever owns the plantation, you know, and then, of course, that's going to come back and it's going to mix. And, you know, the first people to play fiddle with a banjo would be African-Americans. I mean, that's just obvious, you know, it's like <laughs> they've got the banjo. So and they've had the fiddle for hundreds of years. They have these, you know, runaway slave posters saying, you know, plays the fiddle, plays the fiddle, plays the fiddle. It's like highly prized. So you have all that coming into being. And then you have um, 
the this form, this sort of string band form, of course there's interactions between, you know, whites and blacks, particularly poor whites and blacks, because they're the ones, you know, interacting, like, you know, the, the aristocracy is not interested in this, you know, so you've got all this stuff and it starts to, you start getting the first white people playing the banjo, these, these traveling entertainers, like, those are the ones we know about. I mean, who's to say that there wasn't some you know, some white people, like, who didn't, who weren't entertainers, like, you know, who were, for, you know what I mean? Who's like, to say that? But that's what we know, you know, is, is, is these inner, these blackface entertainers start playing the banjo. They make some changes to it. Um, but, you know, in form, it's pretty, it's like, the stuff they do is, it doesn't change the basic form of the banjo. There's no adding the fifth string. I mean, it was already there. And, you know, all of these sorts of things. And then, the, so blackface entertainers start taking the banjo, um, and people go nuts. They're like, what is this thing? This is amazing, you know, and, and it becomes this cultural explosion. Like, they, they travel to Europe and Australia and South, South Africa, and it's the whole world's first uh, encounter with indigenous American music, even done through white people playing in blackface.